Bessie Coleman was born in January 26, 1892. She was the first woman of African American descent to hold a pilot license. She was raised in Texas as a sharecropping family. Coleman began attending school in Waxahachie, a small school at the age of six. She had to walk four miles each day to her segregated one-room school where she loved to read and established herself as an outstanding math student. She completed her elementary education in that school. Consistently, Coleman's daily schedule of school, tasks, and church was hindered by the cotton harvest. At the age of 12, Bessie was accepted into the Missionary Baptist Church School on scholarship. When she turned 18, she took her savings and enrolled in the Oklahoma Colored Agricultural and Langston University. She completed one term before her money ran out and she returned home. There, she built up an early enthusiasm for flying. Unfortunately, African Americans, Native Americans, and ladies had no flight preparing openings in the United States. However, she was so stubborn thinking that nothing can't stop her to pursue her dreams. In 1916, at the age of 24, Coleman moved to Chicago, Illinois, where she lived with her siblings. In Chicago, she functioned as a manicurist at the White Sox Barbershop. There, she heard stories from pilots getting back from World War I of flying during the war. She accepted the second position at a chili parlor at a side of cash in order to become a pilot. As American flight school of the time conceded neither ladies nor black, Robert Abbott, an author and a distributor of the Chicago Defender, urged her to study abroad. Abbott advanced Coleman's journey in his paper and she got money related sponsorship from banker Jesse Binga and the Defender. Coleman took a French language class at the Berlitz School in Chicago and afterward headed out to Paris on November 20, 1920, so she could win her pilot license. She figured out how to fly in Newport 82 biplane with a controlling framework that compromised of a vertical stick, the thickness of a slugger before the pilot and a rudder bar under the pilot's feet. On June 15, 1921, Coleman turned into one of the famous black women and first African American to acquire an aviation license. She was also one of the first black men to obtain worldwide licensed pilot from Federation Aeronautic International. Resolved to clean her abilities, Coleman went through the following two months taking class from a French expert pilot close to Paris, and in two, uh, September 1921, she sailed for America. She became a media sensation when she returned to the United States. With the age of commercial flights still a decade or more in the future, Coleman quickly realized that in order to make a living as a civilian aviator, she would have to become a barnstorming stunt flyer. 
performing dangerous tricks, and then still early technology of airplanes for paying audience. But to succeed in this highly competitive arena, she would need an advanced lesson and more extensive repertoire. Returning to Chicago, Coleman could not find anyone willing to teach her. So in February 1922, she sailed again for Europe. She spent the next two months in France completing an advanced course of aviation, then left in Netherlands to meet with Anthony Fokker, one of the most distinguished aircraft designer. She also traveled in Germany where she visited the Fokker Corporation and received an additional training from one of the company's chief pilots. She then returned to the United States to launch her career in exhibition flying. Queen Bess, as she was known, was a profoundly famous draw for the following five years. Welcome to significant occasions and frequently interviewed by newspapers. She was appreciated by both the blacks and whites. She essentially flew Curtis JN4, Jenny biplanes and other flying machine which had been armed forced, surplus flying machine left over from the war. She showed up in an American air show on September 3, 1922, at an occasion regarding veterans of the all-dark 369th Infantry Regiment of World War I, held at Curtis Field on Long Island, close to New York City, and supported by her companion, Abbott, and the Chicago Defender paper. The show charged Coleman as the world's most prominent lady and featured aerial displays by eight other American ace pilots and a jump by black parachutist Hubbard Julian. Six weeks later, she returned to Chicago to deliver a stunning demonstration of daredevil maneuvers, including figure eights, loops, and near-ground dips to a large enthusiastic crowd at the checkerboard airdrome. The thrill of stunt flying and the appreciation of cheering groups were just a piece of Coleman's dream. Coleman never dismissed her youth, promised to one day amount to something. As an expert aviatrix, Coleman would frequently be condemned by the press for her opportunistic nature and the flashy style she brought to her display flying. Be that as it may, she likewise immediately increased in already for being a talented and brave pilot who might remain determined to finish a troublesome trick. In Los Angeles, she broke a leg and three ribs when her plane slowed down and smashed on February 22, 1923. Committed to promoting aviation and combating racism, Coleman spoke to audiences across the country about the pursuit of aviation and calls for African Americans. She absolutely refused to participate in aviation events that prohibited the attendance of African Americans. Coleman would not live long enough to establish a school for young black every year, but her pioneering achievements served as an inspiration for a generation of African American men and women. Coleman deserved to be one of the most admirable black American who fought against barriers. It is something that a prominent leader do with no hesitation. She refused to do setbacks because she knows that someone's got to do it. From poverty to success, she knows what exactly needs to be done. She plans to achieve her dream by collecting a little amount of cash from jobs so she can reach up to flight school at France so just to get a pilot license respite from suffering in an era of racial discrimination holds stronger. Basic Coleman died with an act of heroism, leading young black Americans to a path of righteousness. She gave hope to black lives to fight back. She knows the consequences, but she still fights to pursue dreams. Her action was very remarkable that both black and white admired.